So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, we're really excited to have Annabelle from Clearwater Farms here today to talk about some different programming and options um, to get all of us outside safely, enjoying being by the water. And we're just really excited that finally we have this nice weather. So um, no matter what the restrictions are looking like where you live, we'll still uh, give you different options on how you can get out there with your family and enjoying nature. So I'm just going to start with a quick introduction of kind of who Watersheds Canada is and also about this uh, webinar series and then introduce Annabelle. So um, we will probably be here about uh, 30 to 45 minutes uh, depending on how many questions people have for us but uh, really the, the main focus will be Annabelle's presentation and then uh, some different education resources that are going to be coming out from Clearwater Farms that we're uh, excited to announce with you. And then we will also share the next webinar in our Freshwater uh, Stewardship Community series. So the two people that are going to be with you today are Annabelle. So she is the founding chair of the Ontario Water Centre and its flagship program, Clearwater Farm. And Monica Seidel is myself. So I work for Watersheds Canada out in Perth, which is about an hour from Ottawa. And if you have any tech issues or questions for Annabelle, um, please drop them, or tech questions for myself and, and questions for Annabelle in the chat, and we will get to them all at the end. You can also private message me if you have any specific questions about the work that Watersheds Canada does. So a bit about the freshwater stewardship community. If uh, any of you haven't tuned into our previous webinars, we've been running this kind of online community since the beginning of the pandemic, um, or sorry, the beginning of the year in uh, response to the pandemic. So typically Watershed Canada, we deliver our programming across the country. We would be connecting with all of you at different events and going out on the water together. And so in response to kind of transitioning everything online, we've launched this community and we're so blown away by the feedback. So far we have over 850 members and it is from all across Canada and also uh, additional countries like the US and Australia, which has been uh, just wonderful. And we're very thankful to the SM Blair Family Foundation for the funding for this community. And if you haven't checked out the website already, I'd really encourage you to do so. There are a number of previous resources, old webinar recordings and education handouts. And the website is watersheds.ca slash freshwater hyphen stewardship. So like I said, I'm just gonna give a quick introduction to Watershed Canada. We are a national nonprofit and charity based out of Perth. We run three kind of main flagship programs. The first I have up on the screen is our Natural Edge program. So this is our shoreline renaturalization program. And this photo was actually taken just a few weeks ago as our team is out physically distanced and restoring shorelines with native plants. We also run a program called the Love Your Lake program, which has coordinated with Watersheds Canada and the Canadian Wildlife Federation. And for this program, we're going out on a boat and assessing properties on a lake or river. And we're using a standardized protocol to evaluate different things that are happening on each property so that we can give recommendations for the property owners. So these voluntary recommendations can vary from enhancing wildlife habitat, maybe installing a, a wildlife friendly and lake friendly dock or boathouse, um, helping with erosion or information about septic system. And so uh, you can see Melissa there on the right hand of the photo, she's holding a report. So each property owner receives a personalized report and they are able to look at those different voluntary recommendations to improve their property health, but also the health of their lake. We also have a number of free resources, which I welcome all of you to check out on our website, watersheds.ca slash resources. And especially in time for summer, we have a number of different habitat enhancement and plant care guides, as well as some habitat restoration protocols, especially for fish habitat. And we will also be launching a number of education resources just next month. And um, so those will all be for free and able to download as PDF. And our final kind of flagship is our in-water habitat restoration programs. So this typically looks at restoring cold water creeks. So planting uh, mature trees along the shore so that they're able to provide shade to the water and keep it cool. 
We also do walleye spawning bed restorations, which you can see in the photo. And finally, we do in-water brush bundle restorations, so bringing back the woody debris into a lake community. So I'm just going to um, introduce our speaker for today. So Annabelle Slate is a member of the Order of Canada and member of the Order of Ontario. She's also the founding chair of the Ontario Water Centre and its flagship initiative, Clear Water Farm. As president of the Owl Children's Trust, she co-founded Owl, Chickpea, and Chirp Magazine for children and produced many kids' television shows. She is the past chair of Shaw Communications Rocket Fund, which has invested more than $245 million in children's audiovisual and digital programs. She holds the Order of Canada and the Order of Ontario for nurturing a passion for science and nature among generations of Canadian children. As a Lake Simcoe champion, she co-founded Ladies of the Lake, which morphed eventually into the Ontario Water Centre. So at this point, I would like to welcome Annabelle um, to give her presentation. Thank you very much, Monica, and hello, everybody. Um, it's, um, it's a great treat to be doing this with Watersheds Canada. I'm a big fan of your organization. Um, and uh, one of the things I love that you say is every shoreline matters, every activity counts, every action counts. That uh, to me is a great uh, motivating uh, slogan to get out there and enjoy uh, everything while you um, are living in harmony with nature. Um, when we were all thinking about what lake we live on and, and uh, why we love it, obviously my lake is Lake Simcoe. Uh, I grew up on the lake and I, was, I lived in Toronto, but um, I remember um, going when I was a kid, running out of the car, straight down and into the water because um, that lake, um, when I was a, was a kid, was very, very important to me. And I can still remember um, the shoreline where um, I lived, unlike this rocky shoreline, which I'll tell you about in a minute, um, was sandy and it had sort of waves of sand. And I can still feel that feeling of um, my toes in the warm sand under the water. Um, and I think that. Uh, those kinds of very formative um, parts of my growing up really did lead to all of the things that um, I'm doing today. And um, I'm sure you agree, but uh, giving kids the opportunity to get out and do things and be with nature and discover and take some risk and all of that sort of thing is really important because um, if kids uh, can get a sense of, of their place in connection with, with the world around them, uh, that is the sort of very earliest, lazy earliest foundations for, uh, for stewardship as one grows um, older over the years. So um, the mission of the Ontario Water Centre, as Monica said, um, it focuses on the connection of land and water. And uh, it basically uh, is engaging young people in water-wise connection uh, with the land and water through the arts and sciences and technology. And inspired by water, we hope to create ripples. So in addition to um, uh, helping the general public become involved and with love for nature and love for water. Um, we are doing, uh, we're working with two groups of young people. Uh, several years ago, our organization had the opportunity to um, become involved with a 180 year old farm on Lake Simcoe. And um, the, town had recently acquired the property and were asking people what they wanted to see done with it and um, we kind of stepped forward and said um, a farm that has been on a lake for 180 years it was founded by pioneers 
and was co-developed with um, a number of the Chippewa families who live in the area should carry on uh, in that kind of mode uh, into the future and be a demonstration property uh, for regenerative farming and a place that kids can explore and learn from. So um, we leapt in with all our feet and it's been quite an adventure. That was five years ago. And, but it has led to many interesting things, which I hope to share with you today. Um, if you can go to the next slide, Monica, um, that lakeshore, by the way, is um, on Lake Simcoe, and you can see it in the top there. Uh, there's the farm, there's the lake. And that's a pretty unique thing in Ontario for a farm to be still on a lake like that. The other thing that's pretty unique about it is that the shoreline, because this thing has been in the same family for 180 years, um, they never got round to doing anything with it. They didn't put in any break walls. They didn't, um, you know, clear away the rocks and put sand beaches and do all of the things that people who live on lakes, um, particularly a, a lake that's as, as well populated and urban as this one, attempt to do. So they just left the shoreline. And so it's probably one of the few uh, shorelines on Lake Simcoe that you can see uh, being exactly as it has always been. So that's the farm. And um, as Monica said, uh, before we we got involved with that, um, we were, the Lake Simcoe, um, we noticed over the years, has been really declining in health. There is just a huge population in this area, and um, it's the combination of, of lots and lots of 50-foot lots with fertilizers on the lawns and hardened shorelines, agriculture, um, uh, roads and salt, and uh, so we've had a huge phosphorus problem on Lake Simcoe where it basically just about wiped out um, the fishery and the weeds have have um, flourished. Uh, it was interesting. I noticed that uh, there was a one of your other uh, webinars had to do with uh, with good weeds uh, in water. So I think a, a lot of people in Lake Simcoe would be interested in in having that. So we'll share that with people as well. So the Ladies of the Lakes calendar, uh, as you might have imagined with a thing called, uh, published around the time that the Calendar Girls film came out in England with Helen Mirren, uh, was beautiful photographs of um, women artfully posed around the lake. Um, I myself was in the calendar and I was sitting behind a huge red book uh, in a forest and uh, I actually don't think I had any more skin exposed than I do on, on this uh, webinar uh, but nevertheless the calendar was beautiful it touched a chord and it caused um, quite a flurry and believe it or not um, we were publishing it to to get uh, some funds to help some university students help people with their shorelines. And um, the calendar made $500,000. And <laughs> it was, uh, our organization didn't even exist. Um, the money was being given to the town who was giving tax receipts. And, but it just touched a chord. Um, it was, can somebody do something is, is really the cry we heard and thank you so much for doing this and then we had to decide what to do um, <laughs> which was uh, easy because the foundation the foundation of the calendar enabled uh, uh, the province to put in a Lake Simcoe Protection Act and uh, the federal government put in a, a Lake Protection Fund uh, and so Lake Simcoe actually became probably the most protected, legislatively at least, lake in the country. And um, there, were not, there was now funds to do projects with people. So we, we levered the, 
the $500,000 into about $6 million worth of projects around the lake to help um, communities uh, undo some of the harm that had been done. But um, if we go to the next uh, slide. Are we stuck there? Oh, there we are. So one of the early things that we did on Clearwater Farm was um, to develop a camp for kids. And it was really tremendous because uh, while we had very experienced camp counselors and um, I and others had been involved in um, nature and education for kids for years, me through Owl Magazine and Chickadee and Chirp and Owl TV and all those things, um, the kids were uh, amazing at uh, giving a, their own head of steam, finding places on the farm that uh, were special to them. And uh, their sort of journey of discovery through that first year uh, resulted in this collage of what the camp meant to them. And it's, uh, it, it, talks about all of the characters and it talks about some of the places. Um, they gave names to all kinds of, of places on the farm. Um, the water sh uh, shed or the water uh, edge was a very special place. They had little coves that they named and they clambered over those big rocks that you saw happily and uh, it was a tremendous foundation. Uh, it was really the first thing we did at the farm. We then started to do a bit of farming, uh, but it, uh, it really got us off to a great foundation. And one of the things that we learned is, uh, or reinforced for us is that, you know, when you're doing for kids, things for kids, uh, one of the best sort of advisors you have is kids themselves. So if you could go to the next uh, video, um, so I can stop talking for a while. Here is uh, Elizabeth Dowdswell, uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario who came to visit and here were her impressions of what was going on there. Do we have sound? What's lovely to see as I pass through Canada 150 lane, the scenic views of Lake Simcoe, of course, but the planting of the 150 maple trees. It's so symbolic, this being the 150th year of Confederation. But I think uh, there's also a much more important message that it symbolizes and that's the message of sustainability. You know I came out having heard about this farm project, uh, came out here over the summer and it was just full of possibilities and full of great ideas and I kept thinking here's a real life example of a, a living laboratory of sustainability because what they were dreaming was something that was about economic prosperity, creating good jobs in a small community. It was about environmental stewardship, living on the shores of this wonderful lake and being able to protect the water uh, from the lake. It was about creating community and social cohesion to looking back at traditional kinds of farming communities and how to make them relevant in, in the future. And so it just struck me that it was a wonderful project that we could showcase and tell stories about and support for a long time. Because those 150 trees along the lane are not planted for us. They're planted for our children and our grandchildren. And so it's really a living example of what sustainability is all about. It seems to me that when uh, the farm and the project actually approached young people, for instance, to reimagine what they could do on the site of an old barn that burned down last year, that those are really the first steps in helping to develop citizenship. Helping, 
helping children to understand how we come together as a community, how we learn together, how we set goals together and how we do something about it. So this provides a potential model for Ontarians and for Canadians because I think you're starting to show how we can sensitively, creatively and sustainably with our both environmental and built heritage uh, look to the future. Today what was so important was just seeing all of these people from the community, from the broader community, coming together on a beautiful old farm with so much history but also so much promise as evidenced in the community that's come together. Thank you, um, Lieutenant Governor Dowswell. She uh, was there because uh, we took the occasion of Canada's 150th birthday to um, get the community involved um, in planting 150 Freeman maples um, all the way down the new driveway so that they will be a legacy as we go on. Now there's an adult version of what goes on at Clearwater Farm. And the next video, um, Monica, if you can set that up, shows um, the kids. What's lovely to see. In action. Thank you. Uh, so you can see the energy there that the kids bring and, and how they've been involved in shaping. Uh, as uh, Elizabeth Dowswell had said, um, the first year after we took over the farm, the barn burnt down, uh, which ironically was done by um, two kids um, who were uh, eight and 10, who were, had snuck onto the property uh, and had gone into the barn with a flare gun uh, to shoot a raccoon that was in the hayloft, which had hay in it that had been there for about 40 years. Uh, it went up like a tinderbox. Fortunately, the kids were okay. Uh, but the community has been really terrific, and kids themselves have been really terrific about coming up with ideas about what the new barn has uh, um, uh, was going to be like or could be like. And we've been raising money for it. And we've brought together two years ago, timber framers from all over North America um, who helped build it. And the community bought pegs that go in the farm. So all of the, the wooden pegs that hold the barn together are all named for the community. 
So it has been quite the community adventure and we certainly didn't anticipate the barn burning down uh, because that kind of um, changed our course a little bit. We became uh, construction um, mavens as well as um, people who are trying to connect people with, uh, with nature. Um, but um, several things have happened as uh, one of the um, slogans that we have is um, uh, making ripples. Uh, so we have done two things, if we could um, go to the next slide. And I think this is perhaps where you come in. Um, this is a book that we have done with the people who, who ran the um, uh, programming for young kids, uh, which uh, shares a lot of the activities and the philosophies for connecting kids with nature. Uh, we were pretty adamant that uh, you didn't have to be in a wild place uh, to do these things so that they were all done with uh, keeping in mind that people in their homes, wherever they may be, uh, even if they don't, um, you know, get out of downtown um, uh, area, uh, should be able to find spaces in nature to do these things. If you can just uh, take us through a little bit, Monica. Next page. Um, every event that we had with kids at the farm began with an opening circle. Uh, this spread tells a little bit about uh, why uh, kids between the ages of 6 and 12 um, are such a wonderful uh, audience. They're so receptive to all of this stuff. And sadly, as you probably all have noticed these days, that uh, people are saying that uh, outdoor exploration for this age range is really diminishing and um, those of us who grew up a long time ago um, knew how much people were outside in in nature and that they're not so much now and so this is kind of a way to help us all remedy that uh, all of the activities in the book have been ranked according to their uh, level of difficulty um, the amount of time they take and the supervision level that's required and the season. They're also all geared to the, to the curriculum so that if anyone is doing homeschooling and needs to sort of find something for social studies for grade three, um, they, can, uh, they can do that in this book too. Um, moving along to, to the next spread. Um, the interesting thing about uh, the people who, who work with the kids um, is that they themselves changed. They were changed by, by the kids. They were changed by the activities. They were changed by the relationship to the place. And the more they were there, the longer that they were there, the more um, they adopted also some indigenous ways of doing things, which is um, thinking of, of yourself as sort of part of the natural system. So all of the kids and all of the um, instructors gave themselves names from nature based on their personalities and what they felt um, they wanted to be. And so did all the kids. And it became a, sort of a wonderful game because they started to look at things and each other very differently than they would. If, if in fact one of them was being called wild ginger uh, and the reason she's called wild ginger is she loves the way that all of the uh, other parts of the forest uh, work with the ginger there are ants hanging around on the ground to pollinate they're resting in the shade of the trees etc and so she was a very community person and that was the name she gave but it was fun for the kids too to come up with names in nature you move along to the next one. And our other project, uh, so by the way, that book um, is going to be launched in, um, in June on 
Amazon, and uh, I believe it's uh, it's 40 pages, and it's absolutely filled with um, wonderful activities, hours and hours of of interesting fun, and I believe it's going to be sold for 9.95, and I think that uh, Monica has agreed to let people know when when it's available. And the nice thing is, is because it is an ebook. Uh, it, they, we, there are many opportunities that videos and games and other things can be downloaded uh, directly from the book. Um, so our other project, uh, which was brought around also a bit by COVID, uh, was the creation of a virtual Clearwater Farm. And this is um, got uh, also being launched in June. And again, I think Monica will let you know um, when it's available. It's particularly geared for kids um, from uh, sort of grade one to grade five. And uh, it, uh, each of these stations uh, that you see on the farm is active and you can go there and uh, there are different activities. There are, are videos to look at. Kids can, can have their own identity and their own avatar. They can collect things in their own backpacks. And if you go on to the next uh, slide, um, for example, you can take a walk in the forest. And while you're in the forest, there are uh, several paths you can take and you can collect, I believe the next slide will show us what you can get when you're in the forest. Yes, different um, uh, trading cards. Uh, and the trading cards all have information that you can learn and you can collect the trading cards and you can trade them for other things and trade them with Potato the Chicken, who you saw, who has become a main feature of our videos and um, our website for kids. And Potato um, is actually a character that has, um, uh, discovered that she is really from the future and has come back uh, to, to today with knowledge about how important water is in people's lives. So the other thing that's on there are games. This just shows you the front page of the Water Me game. We can go on from there. The next slide. Oh, this is back to the what the trading cards look like. And um, for uh, kids who can't read very well or for um, children who have uh, sight uh, issues, uh, everything is um, done with voice uh, as well so that um, you can hear a potato um, telling you uh, what's going on in each case. We move on to the next slide. Uh, again, so these are our, this is looking inside your backpack. So these are um, supposedly you've already found the deer and the porcupine and you know that you're out looking, you're looking for an ant and a blue jay and a frog, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's, it's like discovering nature, but uh, the whole purpose of the website too is to actually inspire kids to get outside and do the real thing. You can go on to the next one. Um, the headquarters uh, at, the, at the virtual farm as at the real farm uh, is a yurt, um, which is a place where kids can collect things and it's a combination museum and art gallery and fort and uh, on the site kids are able to, um, to decorate the yurt, uh, to share their decor for the yurt with others. Um, you get trophies for various things that you've accomplished and they will land on your trophy shelf and the things that you found in the ground can uh, or um, are growing or uh, are wild things they can go you can put them right in your um, containers there and the posters keep changing as well and you can have different posters in the um, parents and educators page, there are tons of uh, lesson plans and um, other ideas. Uh, there are also a bunch of how-to films. And on the Clearwater Kids TV section, there are um, uh, over, I would say, 
30 hours of different videos, which are activities, things to do, things to inspire you to get outside. So moving along here. Uh, there's the trading post. Uh, there's uh, uh, Potato the Chicken. And right now, um, with Chickadee Magazine, who we're partnering with, um, that was one of the magazines I founded years ago, um, kids are um, entering a contest uh, to talk about what they think that Potato's unicorn uh, horn on her head uh, is used for. So once again, kids are helping to shape uh, the characters and shape the things that we do, which is really fun and the best way. Uh, so this is where you trade your uh, trade for other things. Uh, another thing that's a feature of this is that uh, on some days it rains and the rain um, is a bonus so that when when it does rain, uh, Potato celebrates by offering specials that you can trade, get, uh, can trade more with your cards than you could if it's not raining. Um, moving along. Um, there's a, a fast glance of the trading post and this is uh, what Potato has to trade and this is what you have to, to trade and it's just showing statically what it's going to be like. Now this is going through its rigorous testing um, process right now and as we say I think it'll be launched in in early early June so um, we hope you will check it out. That's uh, clearwaterkids.org and I think that might just wrap it up. Is there one more slide there or are we to the end? We are. And um, so back to our shoreline again and um, my favorite lake. And uh, thank you for being with us. And does anyone have any questions? Looks like you might be in the clear, Annabelle. <laughs> um, I will just pop in the chat Annabelle's email and my email. If you have any questions that you think of later, or maybe later in the summer, if you want to check back on the new website launch or the ebook, feel free to contact either of us and we will pass those resources along to you. And something else that Annabelle and I would appreciate, oops, uh, we just have a short evaluation survey, I guess, um, just letting us know how the webinar was and um, so it can help shape new topics for this webinar series as we keep going uh, through these different lockdowns. Um, if there are any topics that you're interested in or maybe specific organizations or research that you'd like to hear about, please feel free to fill in that evaluation survey and just let us know what you'd like to see. Uh, Sheila is just saying thank you for so many great resources over the year from OWL to Ladies of the Lake. Thank you. Well, and um, we know we'd love to hear from you. Um, uh, it's very important to our organization um, to have input from others because really what we're trying to do is reflect back to everybody their ideas and their hopes for how the future might be better. And I did say off the top that we would be sharing an education resource, which I'm just having trouble finding on my desktop. So please, everyone, bear with me. Uh, here we go. So this handout is now available on our website. And so it's just summarizing everything that Annabelle talked on today. It also has a link to a video for a biodiversity book list that they made. So they recommend different children's books based on uh, science and nature topics. So this is a free handout for everyone. We'll also email it to you later this week along with the recording of the webinar if you would like to share that with anyone who maybe wasn't able to attend live. 
And like Annabelle said, we will of course pass along the links for the ebook and the new launch of the Clearwater Kids website once that happens. And um, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining us. If there aren't any more questions, the last thing that I would like to do is just share the information for the next webinar in our Freshwater uh, Stewardship Community Series. And that is happening on Thursday, June 10th at 4 p.m., just like today. And it's going to be uh, Kaylee Setter from the Canadian Wildlife Federation and myself. And we're going to be celebrating Rivers to Oceans Week, talking about different activities that both of our organizations have. Uh, just like Clearwater Farms, we're trying to get kids and their families outside the summer, out by the water. <clears throat> and in terms of, one second. Sorry about that. Uh, in terms of Watersheds Canada, we are la launching a new Nature Discovery Backpack Lending Library project in Eastern Ontario. And so a way that we can still have this outdoor education programming, but of course, rather than gathering in a large group where we would maybe host a workshop, we're going to be giving all those materials to individual families to borrow throughout the year. So I just dropped in the chat the registration link for that. And I encourage everyone to register, even if you can't attend live, um, we will of course send you all of the free resources that Kaylee and I talk about in that webinar and the recording and the registration for that new lending library. So if there are no more questions, then I think we'll just let everyone enjoy the rest of their beautiful Wednesday afternoon. And of course, everyone stay safe and uh, we'll talk to you soon. And thank you. Thank Annabelle. you. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the good work you do.